Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Centerport United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Roy Grubbs, and alongside our music director, Joe Ferrante, we welcome you to our sanctuary here in 2021. We have finally moved into a new year, and 2020 posed many, many different kinds of challenges for all of us. And for some, it was, a, it was just a, an awful year. For some, there were many blessings in it, but it was very hard for all of us. And we come to 2021 now to worship God together, and we're still celebrating the birth of Christ. Today is Epiphany Sunday, when we remember the story of the three wise men traveling from the east and coming to kneel at the feet of Jesus and offering gifts, their worship and their praise. And so the question for all of us is, what gift can we bring in this Epiphany season to Jesus? And how can we make the world an even brighter and better place than it has been? This year is full of hope. So happy new calendar year to you all. And let us now join together in silent prayer. I'm going to ask you all to close your eyes, to breathe out and let all the distractions fall away. And as you breathe in, let that be the Holy Spirit. and light. Open our eyes this morning that we may see your light in the darkness. Open our hearts that we may perceive your promises of justice and righteousness fulfilled in the babe of Bethlehem. May we, like the Magi, have a star to guide us on our journey to find the one who will truly set us free. May this time of worship bring us closer to you and may the good news of the birth of light and love transform our lives. Amen. And we begin with our opening hymn, We Three Kings. Together we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 5. And we thank Christina Manzano for joining us on our hymns this morning. Hundreds and hundreds of years before. 
and studying the scriptures of the Jews, they knew that the star would lead them to the one that would be the Messiah, the Christ. And you know, maybe you had seen that star that was in the skies about a week or two ago, right around Christmas, right before. Isn't it amazing? Jupiter and Saturn coming into such alignment that there was this beautiful, bright, star-like object in the sky, something that had not been seen for over 800 years. And in a year like 2020, didn't we need that at the end to usher in Christ's coming new in our hearts? And now we prepare as we move in to this deepening in this story of the Magi. But first, let us pray. You know, as we've moved into this new year now, we come with so much hope and all the gifts around our Christmas wreath of hope and peace and joy and love. And I pray that those are still with you as we move into this new season, this new year, an epiphany, celebrating the gifts of Christ. But more importantly now, what can we bring and what can we offer? Well, we come now with our prayers, so let us deepen in prayer to God with one another. Oh God, in this new season, we come to give you thanks and praise for all that you have seen us through, through this last calendar year and now into this new year, 2021. It's hard to believe it's here already. So Lord, we give you our thanks and our praise. and. Like those magi from long ago, we come bearing the gifts that you've given to us. And we come in asking, what can we do to honor you and to share with others? We come to kneel before you in love, offering ourselves as a sacrifice to you and an offering to the world. Lord, help to guide us in this new calendar year as we covenant with you to be the center of our lives. Help us to help you and help one another. Lord, there are so many that are in need right now. I think of Connie Ritter who recently lost her beloved Carl. I think of those in our congregation that are dealing with loved ones battling cancer those that have family members battling COVID, those that have lost their jobs, those that are out in this cold, Lord, those that are waiting in long food lines, we thank you for those of us that you have given us a home and food and shelter and clothing and health that we can share with others. Lord, I thank you for the generosity I've seen all through this season with those in our church and those that I can see on the news around the country offering their gifts to help others in these challenging times. Lord, may you continue to guide and lead us in this new calendar year and to help us be a blessing to you and to one another. Lord, we come with our prayers and we lift them up to you now. Lord, we come bowing in our hearts and minds to you right now. And it's in your Son's name that we pray together the words that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Can we come?
come now to this time in our worship service, our offering. And you can see our wise men, as we deepen into the scripture, they came from so far, traveling through dangerous roads to offer to the Christ child various gifts. And it makes me think of our offering. This would be a time when I would pass the offering plates around to a crowded sanctuary full of people. But in COVID, the four of us, Christina and Joe and Gina Grubbs behind the camera and myself, are here offering this service for you and for God. And so we come with the same question on our hearts. What gift can we bring? Today, Gina and I offer our financial gifts to this church for God's work in our community, in our nation, and in our world. We have a placard that's inside this offering plate, and it says, I give electronically. Gina and I have moved to electronic donations for our church. We go through our church's website, and there's various ways that we can offer to all of the ministries of the church. And we pray that you join us by going to centerportumc.org and finding out all the ways that you can support our ministries. But I give electronically. Jean and I lead Bible studies, and she leads a women's group. In fact, we're going to be offering youth group and Sunday school and all kinds of Bible studies and small groups online this year and so much more. And we do all that through electronic means right now. And so many others in our church and our community join us online and offer all the experiences that they've had and the insights that they've had throughout their lives that have allowed Gina and I to learn so much more. Christina, you and I have been texting one another throughout the Chris Christmas season and helping one another through in these challenging times. And Joe, I know you and I talk on the cell phone a lot, even in the chaos of your household with all these kids, especially little Colin that's come into your life recently. And he's shared us be be with us beautiful pictures he's taken on his cell phone of this precious gift, Colin, coming into their lives in late October. I give electronically can mean that you reach out on the phone, that you have a Zoom call with someone where they can see your face in prayer, in support, in fellowship. There's so many ways that you have been given, that you have been offering to the world, and I pray that they continue, and that you continue to ask Christ, what gift can I bring, Jesus, to you, just like these wise men from so long ago? We want to be like them more and more often. And so we come now to the prayer dedication for the gifts that we offer this day. Let us pray. God of light and promise, we bring our gifts to further your work in a dark world. May they bring your light to those overwhelmed by darkness, pain, and loneliness. Accept these gifts of money, time, and even ourselves. Let them shine for all to see, spreading your love throughout the whole world. Amen. And of course, on this Epiphany Sunday, it's only right and appropriate that we join in our second hymn today called The First Noel. And together we'll join in verses 1 and 2. Thank you. 
As we prepare to hear the gospel reading for this morning, let us pray. Loving God, open our hearts and minds to the light of your word. May the words we hear transform us and guide us as we follow the star of love and light. Amen. And our gospel reading this morning comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, The Journey of the Magi. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to him, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. You know, throughout this Christmas season, I have been trying to visualize these events. I'm one of those very visual people. I like to see things. I close my eyes and try to remember where I've placed something that I can't seem to recall off the top of my head. Or if I don't have a book with me, I try to close my eyes and remember reading a page where that information was and try to recall it in my mind. It's easier for me to see things, to understand it. And even if I wasn't there, I try to picture it in my mind. And so our nativity scene tries to do the best job that it can. Three wise men coming from the east, carrying their gifts and kneeling down in front of Jesus, who is a child. The king of the Jews and the king, really, of all of us, our Savior, our Messiah, the one who would grow to become the most important being ever on earth. God with us, Emmanuel. They knew this. They had studied the scriptures, and they saw the star in the sky, and they were led to drop their lives, whatever that was, where they were, and to travel a far distance into a different land, a different country. And they entered a country that had a king at the time, that was ruthless, that would do anything to stay in power, and that felt threatened by these words from these wise men. And he believed these words. He was scared of them. When he heard that these wise men had come, he wanted to find out everything he could about where this child was. And so he craftily asked these wise men to go and search diligently for the child and come back and tell him all about it so that King Herod could go himself and 
pay him homage. Now let's leave King Herod for a moment and focus on these three wise men. And when they come, remember they're coming to a place that's very humble. Jesus and Mary are, or Joseph and Mary are still in Bethlehem when they come. And they find Jesus not in a palace, but they find him in a humble, very humble beginning. Yet that star was shining right over them. To these wise men, it didn't matter whether they found Jesus in a palace or just out in an open field. They only knew that they needed to be where he was. And they would do anything to get there. And following God's prompting, they found him. And that was all they needed. For the scene was glorious to them. These wise men kneeling down and offering gold and frankincense and myrrh, representing the kingly nature of Jesus, the priestly nature of Jesus, and the prophet Jesus who was going to be the one to offer himself for all humanity, for all time. They knew what gifts to offer, and they came and gave them freely, What gifts do we bring? What gift is too much for us to offer to Jesus? To offer to God's work in a kingdom that needs light and love so desperately? Is there something that's too much for God to ask of us? Or are we willing to open up and promise to offer anything that we have in service? I pray as we move into 2021, like these wise men, we'd be even willing to travel a long distance for God, for all the gifts we've been given. Maybe we'd be willing to travel once again, whether through airways or, dare I say, later on in 2021, when we're allowed to travel in the ways that we're used to again. Maybe we'd be willing to do that for God, too. Would we be willing to offer our very, very best? What is the gold that's in our lives? Now, I'm talking monetarily, but I'm also talking the gold of our gifts. What gifts have we been given, and how will we use them for God in this year of 2021? And be willing to kneel down whether we physically do that or do that in our hearts and minds, to the one who is the greatest of all, and the one who binds us together as the one body. You see, I think in 2021 it will be even more crucial for us to not only listen, listen for God's prompting, but to think of ourselves as the body of Christ. And only when the parts come together that can the body move properly and run and sing together. Now we need to be wary of King Herod's in our way. There are many things that would try to stop us from offering to God. And these three wise men were told to not go back to King Herod, for see, he was a wicked ruler. The Jews lived under Roman occupation, but there were those that were placed in charge, and some of those were out to do harm. King Herod was one of them. Following this story, he tries to eliminate Jesus through drastic, terrible measures. Fortunately, God sends messengers, angels, to tell Joseph and Mary to leave Israel, and to go to Egypt to keep Jesus safe. These three wise men listened and knew that they should not return to King Herod, but go home by another road. 
Sometimes we may be faced with a King Herod of some kind in our life, and God so desperately wants us to go another way. And instead of fighting it, maybe we listen and simply follow. God always knows what's best for us in any given circumstance, even if it means great sacrifice on our part. But when we follow God and trust and just kneel our authority and place authority in the hands of Jesus, that's when our hearts can truly sing. And that's truly the best gift we can give Jesus, is power and authority over our souls, over our actions, over the ways that we speak and don't, over the ways that we act and stop from acting. May we remember this in our lives and go forward in 2021 offering the very best to Jesus. Amen. And so as it is the first Sunday in this new calendar year, we prepare our hearts for Holy Communion, the sacrament that offers Jesus' body and blood for all of us. And so we have bread, and we serve grape juice here in the United Methodist Church so that all are welcome to join. And we, since we are recording this service, you can go ahead and pause it now and go and collect bread and juice on your own to come and join us. Anything that you have, bread or crackers, any kind of juice that you would like to take, go ahead and collect that and come back and join us for our communion service. And so we come to this time to, as we prepare our hearts to receive communion, to share in our communion hymn called, Let Us Be Bread. Christmas, Jesus would grow into a, a man and come for ministry, first with baptism and then to heal and to teach and to counsel and maybe even to offer a new way to be for those who would listen. But of course, those in power were always after him from the beginning of his life, like King Herod. And even the Pharisees and Sadducees, the religious leaders of the time in Israel, who did not want to see their power wane, especially to Jesus. And so they were after him. And Jesus knew this. And so with his disciples who he had trained for three years, knowing it was the last night of his life, he gathered them in an upper room where they ate and they had bread with every meal. And so Jesus took the bread and blessed it, and he gave thanks for it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is broken and given to you. Drink from this often and remember me. And then later on, Jesus took the cup. And again, he gave 
thanks for it and blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood. The blood of the new covenant poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from this offering and remember me. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks for these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. And we ask for your Holy Spirit now, Christ's Spirit, to fill these gifts and make them be for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We come offering our whole selves, God, to receive these gifts freely and let them fill us and flow through us into a world, a world that has darkness in it, but where you can call us to be your hands and feet and even the light of Christ where we would need to shine. Bless these gifts here in this sanctuary, Lord, and these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine out in the airways. Make them all your bread and your wine. Amen. And so here, we are sharing, using communion cups in this time of COVID, this is how those of us gathered here in the sanctuary have to receive. But I ask you to go ahead and take the bread, and with whoever you're with or if you're alone, go ahead and say, the body of Christ broken for you. And take a piece of that bread. And then, when you get to the cup, say the blood of Christ shed for you. And offer that to those you're with. For those of us here, if you peel back the very top layer, you'll see the bread. And you go ahead and take that. The body of Christ broken for you. And then if you peel back the second layer, which is a little more tricky. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine as we feel them in our body now in this First Sunday of this new calendar year, this Epiphany Sunday, not only do we come trying to offer our gifts to you, but you constantly are giving us gifts, including this grace, this holy meal, this mystery that you've blessed us with, binding us to you and to one another. We can't give you enough thanks and praise, Lord. And we promise to go and be your hands and feet in the world. Amen. And we come now to our closing hymn for this service that poses a question to all of us. What child is this? What child is this? A child like no other. Thank you. 
This, this is Christ the King. The one whom the angels sang of, the one whom the shepherds heard of and went to see on their own, and the one whom wise men from very far away came and knelt down in front of, offering him gold and frankincense and myrrh. The King of all creation. We give God thanks and praise that Jesus is always with us and will never ever let us go. What gift can we bring? We can bring God our hearts, our minds, our souls, our strength, our actions, our prayers. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Amen.